Hey everybody, it's Jake from Wild Academy and welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about built-in functions. Now a function allows us to use the same block of code over and over again in our program. So we don't have to write the same thing multiple times. So we want to keep things dry, which is do not repeat yourself. Now PHP provides a bunch of built-in functions because they are things that are done common, commonly. So Every programmer that comes and uses PHP, they don't have to create new ones. So I'm going to show you a few of the common ones. And we're going to start out with functions that are used on strings. So let's just go ahead and use str and it's to upper, so string to upper. Okay, and you'll see that these autofill, uh, these functions will autofill these built-in ones, but we're just going to use the string to upper one, okay? And then you supply an argument here and we're actually just going to use a string, not a variable name. So we'll do this will, we'll throw some caps in, all be caps. Okay. Caps, uppercase, capitalized. It would be, this will all be cap, uppercase. There we go. Boom, let's get excited about it. So this string in this program would be made all caps. It would return this string in all caps. So to show this, what we'll do is we'll just print this out. So print string to upper, then we'll save the file here. I just saved mine as built-in functions. Again, save it as whatever you want. Uh, and then we're gonna run it by hitting F7. You'll see that the return, the string was printed out. This will all be uppercase. You can probably guess what the built-in function string to lower is. So let's do string to lower. We'll just throw in some capital letters in here. This will all be lower. Save it and run it. And you'll see that it returns or prints in this case. This will all be lower. I want you to notice the name of this function, string or str, so string to lower here and the string to upper. What this does is it makes it, it's a mnemonic. It makes it really easy to remember what these functions do. So when you're creating your own custom functions, it's you really want to make sure that when you do create those, that you make you give them names that make sense and give you clues so that later on when you see them, you know exactly what it is that that function does. Or if somebody else uses your program, you don't have to put in any notes because it's clear what that function does. But again, we'll talk about creating your own custom functions in a later video. I'm going to show you some more string functions and then we'll move on to some math functions. First, what we're going to do is we're actually going to create a var here. We'll just name it var and we'll set it equal to this string to lower here. And then we'll print out the var here. All right, so that'll make it easy for us to just change the function we're using and then print out the variable. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do string length. So it's S-T-R-L-E-N, short for length. And this will tell us how many elements are in our string here. So we hit save, we run this, and you'll see that it's 23. If we remove this right here, save, you'll see that there's less now, 16. One, two, three, four, five. Now the spaces count as an element. Just thought I'd let you know. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay? So something like this could be used and say if you wanted to limit the amount of elements that could be in a string or, you know, check to make sure that something is long enough, a string is long enough. Let's say we wanted to just print out will here, so a substring of the string. We could come up here, just eliminate this string length right here. Uh, there we go. And we set it equal to substray, just like that. Then we come in here and we're actually going to do, we're going to, I'm going to show you two different ways of doing this. So the first thing you're going to put is your argument in these, uh, the, 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 the element or the variable that we're going to be targeting. Now the second argument is where this substring will start. So you see integer start right here. String, this is the string right here. We could do uh, will, so using our index numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We know that will, will is the fifth element. 
Nice. Good, good plug there. So we do a 5 here. Now the next argument we provide will say how long. So integer length right here, it actually shows us with the Komodo IDE how many elements do you want to go over. Now we want to go over four elements here. So this will be the W, the I, and the two L's. Then we can save this and run it. And you'll see that will was returned right here. Okay, now the other way of doing this that I want to show you is to just get rid of the substring right here. We'll just make this will. We'll just provide this argument. So very very is equal to, I'll just get rid of this here. We'll just make that the string. This will all be. Come down below this line. We're going to create a new variable and it's going to be called subvar. Underscore var. It's the substring of this variable. It's a sub of this variable, like a sandwich. And we're going to set this variable now equal to this variable. I just I hate when I point at the screen, but I did it. You write substra right here, just like before. Then provide the string or the variable here, which is var. Then we're going to provide where will was, which was at five. And we're going to include, let's just include all this time. So four, five, because of the space, six, seven, eight. So we'll do eight here. Semicolon at the end. Now save it and then run the file. Oh, we jumped the gun here. We didn't do substra down here. Just change this underscore right there. So now we print out this new variable and hit save, rerun that. And will all is printed. So to mix this up a little bit, let's just change the string name here. We'll, we'll type where, where is Waldo at? Okay. On this next function, we want to figure out the positioning of Waldo. So we do string position, string po POS, piece of something. String pause. Now here, we're just going to do var. We want to figure out where Waldo is. So our first argument is the variable there. Here, I mean, we can change this to whatever, like uh, Wald, Waldo, the Waldo var. And string position, var, targeting this one right here. So what we could do is we could just put a W here because this is where Waldo, Waldo is starts with a W, but so does where. So actually we return the index position of zero. So what we need to do is do WA. So this is kind of like when you use the find function, control F in Google Chrome, and you're looking for a specific word uh, on a page. So we could do this, come down here, change this print variable to Waldo var, and then save it and run it. And you'll see that Waldo starts at position nine. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we've found it. If you want to be more particular, so let's say, like so, actually let's just show you what I mean. I'll get rid of the A here, save it, and run it, and you'll see that W or 0 was returned because W is at the 0 index position. So we just do Waldo, and that ensures, because if we're, if we're looking at a huge page of text, if our variable is a huge page of text, uh, then WA will come up a couple of times, right? Like NWA, uh, depending on what you're reading about, uh, Washington, you know, all it was, wasn't, like all sorts of words. So be precise and you will get what you're looking for. I feel like that's a quote about life, but anyhow. Moving on to the next function, we're going to cover some math functions. Uh, this one in particular will just return, uh, so let's actually let's do, let's make var equal to, actually the, uh, let's, let's get rid of var, we don't need it. And we'll just do print. Now we want a random number between the numbers of 1 and 20. So we'll do rand, and then here we want to set our minimum and our maximum. So min and then our max, okay? I'm just going to type that out. So the first argument is our min, and here we'll just do uh, we'll just do one, 
and then we'll just do 20 here. Go ahead and save that and run it and you'll see 13 was returned. If you run it again you'll see another number is returned, completely random. 9, F7, 7 was returned. We can increase this right there, get that a little bit bigger. Real nice. And again, we're not you don't need to set this minimum to 1. I mean, you could set it to 15 if you wanted to. And you could set this to to 30. I mean, it doesn't you're not limited. And then run it. I'll see 21 is returned there. So to drive home the programming concepts that we've talked about several times already, uh, let's create another var. And we'll just do var1 here. And we'll set it equal to 10. We'll do var2 down here. We'll set that equal to, let's just do 80. Come down here, supply the min, which is var1. Var2. Okay. Backspace that up, hit save, run it, you'll see 41 is returned, run it again, 47, run it again, 65. Alright, so I hope that's completely clear. That's that's basic, but it's, it's like a way to show you uh, this function by also giving reviews. Showing another math function, if we come up here and we just make, let's say we're going to make var1 25.69, just do a float of anything, right? 69. 54 okay then coming down here if we want to round it you can probably guess what this is going to be right round okay now we don't need the var2 here just delete that we only supply one argument here we save it and return it you'll see 26 is returned because 25.69 rounded up or 25.6954 rounded up is 26. If we were to change this to a 4 right here, uh, follows the same rules as you know you learn when you are learning rounding, it goes back down to 25. The round function does allow us to specify how many decimal places over we want to go. So if we supply a second argument of 2 here, it gives us the precision. That's what it's telling us here, integer precision. We hit save, we hit 7, and you'll see that 25 Point 0.5 is returned. Now what's that? What that is doing is it's going two elements over and rounding from there. Because this is a 9, it's going to return this as 5. Now that might be a little bit confusing because what's happening here is it's checking the 5, it's making the 9 round up because that's a 5, and it's bringing this to 0 which makes this 5. So actually to better uh, show this, if I delete this 9 here and I instead make it a 4, and then let's say we're going to make this one a 6. Actually, I lied. We want these to be a little bit different. So um, this will end up rounding that up to a 9, the 6 will. That's where it's going to check. So I hit Save here, then I run it, and you'll see 25.49 is returned. I hope that makes sense. It looks at this number right here, and it, it supplies two decimal places over. If I were to change this to 3 and run it, you'll see that 486 supplies 4, or sorry, 3 decimal places over. It's looking at this 4 to decide to stay with 6. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video if you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please ask those down below. There's many more built-in functions in PHP. I just wanted to give you guys a taste and, uh, you know, build up your taste for that uh, delicious cheese and then you will go off and learn more built-in functions later on uh, on your own many 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 more and then you'll create your own functions as well thanks for watching i will see you guys in the next one peace